there, it's Jen, and thanks so much for joining me today. Um, today I'm creating a card using some Joy Claire digital images, and the uh, collections that I will be using are barrels and then band together. And I'm actually creating one card on screen, and then the other one is just a project share, um, just to show you some different uh, variations of using the same digital image. So here are my images printed out. Uh, one is printed out on Bristol Smooth cardstock and then other one is printed out on Hammer Mill. And the one that is printed on Bristol Smooth, I am going to be doing some watercoloring. And so I am trying out these watercolor and these watercolors are called Viviva. And what it is is a little booklet of um, colors or pigment on paper. So it's kind of like the Peerless watercolors, um, kind of the same concept. I don't have those. I have never used those before. And so this is my first time using anything like this. Um, what I really love about these is that you can take it with you anywhere. So great for on the go. If you know you're going to be waiting and you have a little bit of extra time, um, these are awesome for that. Um, if you had a water brush pen, um, that is all you would need is your whatever you're going to color and this little booklet it is super handy there's a little piece of kind of like a wax paper in between each color set so that the colors don't um, mix in that way and for this video I am coloring on Bristol smooth I will do another video coloring on watercolor paper I don't I'm just uh, so used to using Bristol Smooth because I'm usually watercoloring with markers that this is just what I printed on. And so the color is not going to move around as it would on a water watercolor sheet. And these are super easy to do. I just wet my brush and then dipped it into the color. And then now I'm applying it to the image. And with that one dip of my brush into the color, I was able to color the entire um, image of sunflowers. And so it, as you can see, this color started out as kind of an orangey yellow. And then as I color more, of course, it's going to fade because I don't have as much um, paint on the brush. And another great thing about these colors is that the name of the colors is below each color swatch. Um, and then as well, if you're flipping through, this booklet has 16 colors, but if you're flipping through, um, you can see on the bottom of each page, it has the colors there. So it's really easy to just flip through and find the color that you need. Um, this palette does not have a brown, and so I have to mix my own brown. And so um, it has this little palette paper sort of thing um, where you can mix some colors, and so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take the Chrisman, um, one of the yellows, and then a color called Peacock Blue. So basically I'm taking red, yellow, and blue and mixing those together to get a brown so that I can color the center of the sunflowers. Um, so one thing to note is this color right here that you see on the bottom is looks like it's a maroon color, but it is actually a Peacock Blue. So all of the color squares don't exactly match what you will get when you put it on paper. So it's a good idea to swatch your colors anyhow, but for these, it's an even better idea um, just so you know exactly what color you're getting. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take that brown and just color all of the centers of my flowers. And once I have the images colored, I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut these out. And usually I would use my scan and cut, but for these images, uh, they were really easy to cut out and probably a little bit quicker um, having me cut them out by hand rather than loading them up in the machine. And when I was creating the layout for these images on my computer, I knew that I did not want to have to pop up the sentiment or have it be a separate piece of paper. And so the panel I created, I created with enough room around it that I could just cut that out and have that be my main piece. Um, but the flower didn't cover those corners 
um, completely. And so what I ended up doing was just cutting those corners off so that you don't see those um, and you only see the flower piece. Um, and I'm going to pop these up a little bit. So I am using some of that very thin foam that I've been using a lot of lately. And I'll go ahead and hear those to both of the um, images and then take some liquid glue and adhere those sunflowers to the top and the bottom of that card panel. Um, I also take some black acrylic paint and add a little bit of black paint splatter to the card. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and adhere this panel to a brown four and a quarter by five and a half card panel. And then both of those would be adhered to the white card base. Um, I added a few sequins and that will finish that card off. Um, the next card that I created that I just did off screen, I colored this with my Copic Chow markers. Um, and that button on the side, it was not just something that I originally planned to do, but um, I ended up tearing the paper with tape. The hand rubble paper, is, it tears very easily. And when I had taped down my die, my square die, it had torn the paper and I didn't want to have to redo it. So that was my solution to kind of hide that mistake. Um, but that'll do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did like this video or find it informative, please go ahead and give a thumbs up. Um, if you're interested in seeing more videos, please don't forget to subscribe. Um, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to catch you later.